Good morning. Yes, um, we're going to begin as a subcommittee and ask Senator Block to uh, go ahead and get us started with his bill. It's the fifth item on the agenda, naturopathic doctors. Welcome and good morning. Thank you, Madam Chair, and good morning to you. Um, first of all, I want to thank you and the committee staff for working with my office to draft amendments that narrow the scope on this bill. I accept the committee's suggested amendments that appear on page 11 of the analysis. Thank you. There are 10,000 Californians, or tens of thousands, who already see naturopathic doctors as their primary care physicians. Given the, the tremendous shortage of primary care doctors in California, um, it's especially important that we not unreasonably impose restrictions on those who are being seen as primary care doctors, as long as they can safely and effectively fulfill their scope. Naturopathic doctors are already recognized by law as primary care doctors who can independently diagnose and treat disease. SB 538 just expands the scope of their practice so they can also independently prescribe some very limited medications. Specifically, this bill would allow naturopathic doctors to independently prescribe Schedule 5 drugs and medications that are labeled for prescription only. This includes drugs like antibiotics, blood pressure medicine, rescue inhalers for asthma, low modal for diarrhea. These are drugs that if the primary care naturopathic doctor had to refer their patients to an MD to get prescriptions for these minor drugs, that minor medical problems could become really major medical conditions. If you don't get your blood pressure medicine, your antibiotic, your rescue inhaler right away, that leads to problems. Right now, a, a naturopathic doctor who has a lot of training, which I'll get into in a moment, a naturopathic doctor has to refer a patient for these types of drugs to an MD, and that referral can take days or weeks or even months, uh, particularly in a lot of our underserved areas of the state in the Central Valley and in some of the urban areas. Uh, so, so this really protects patients who are already seeing naturopathic doctors for primary care. And about the training, naturopathic doctors attend four-year postgraduate accredited naturopathic medical schools that are recognized by the U.S. Department of Education. As part of their education, they complete a thorough curriculum in basic and clinical science that includes biochemistry, pharmacology, lab diagnosis, epidemiology, pathology, neuroscience, and clinical physical diagnosis. They're required to do more hours in these courses than students at Yale Medical School are required to complete, almost as many hours as students at Johns Hopkins Medical School. While they do not have a hospital residency, they are required to complete a minimum of 1,200 hours of clinical experience. Naturopathic doctors are licensed and regulated in California by the Naturopathic Medicine Committee, whose primary responsibility is to protect the public. The committee consists of nine members, including five naturopathic doctors, two physicians, one is a Harvard-trained MD, and two public members. In response to California's primary care shortage, the California Naturopathic Medicine Committee convened a subcommittee with an equal number of naturopathic doctors and medical doctors to look at what they can do about the primary care shortage in California with the, the advent of the Affordable Care Act and, and increasing numbers of people who are now covered for, for health care but don't get health care. And what this, this group with equal numbers of MDs and naturopathic doctors recommended is a far, far broader scope than what this bill proposes. Naturopathic doctors already have the authority to independently prescribe medications in eight other states, and they're doing so safely. In fact, the, Nation, the National Practitioner Data Bank maintained by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services has not recorded any medical malpractice claim against any naturopathic doctor in the United States. SB 538 will ensure that patients receiving primary care from a naturopathic doctor can receive the appropriate care without the added time, cost, and health risk of finding another prescription for a routine, another physician for a routine prescription. It's had bipartisan support in the Senate. The bill is sponsored by the California Naturopathic Doctors Association, supported by the California Naturopathic Medicine Committee, Bastyr University, and the American Association of Retired Persons, AARP. With me here to testify in support and answer any questions are Dr. Jennifer Barr, a naturopathic doctor, Dr. Marcus Miller, a medical doctor, a naturopathic doctor, a professor at the National College of Natural Medicine and Pharmacology, and Rebecca Mitchell, executive officer of the California Naturopathic Medicine Committee. 
Thank you very much. Witnesses in support and welcome Dr. Miller and Dr. Barr. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. My name is Dr. Jennifer Barr. I'm the Vice President of the California Naturopathic Doctors Association and I'm also the Legislative Chair. Um, I have a private practice in San Diego um, and I'm also adjunct faculty at Bastyr University, California's Naturopathic Medical School. I'm also a proud U.S. Navy veteran. Naturopathic doctors have been licensed in California since 2003. Our current scope allows us to independently practice as primary care doctors. We can diagnose and treat all health conditions without supervision. Naturopathic doctors practice evidence-based medicine and refer out to medical specialists like any other primary care doctor. The only circumstance that requires MD supervision is the prescription of certain medications. This supervision is administrative. It is a paper agreement that does not involve case review or signing of scripts or charts. In most cases, the MD does not even practice in the same office. For many reasons, it is very difficult for most of our doctors to obtain this supervision. It creates a time and financial to barrier to care for patients. The supervision requirement is not due to a lack of training. Much of the concern about training and safety related to naturopathic doctors has resulted from confusion because of the lack of title protection for the word naturopath here in California. Any lay person may use the term naturopath. Naturopaths are not licensed medical professionals and do not have standardized training. SB 538 only pertains to naturopathic doctors who are trained at the four-year postgraduate medical school that Senator Block discussed earlier. These schools are recognized by the U.S. Department of Education. We are licensed by the state of California and naturopathic doctors are subject to the same safety standards as an MD. Um, our training is in fact comparable to that of an MD. We, com we complete curriculum in the same biomedical sciences, including pharmacology, and are often taught by MDs. All licensed naturopathic doctors are trained to practice independently with broad prescriptive rights, including scheduled drugs. Naturopathic doctors do have an excellent safety record for prescribing medications without supervision in other states. Malpractice rates for naturopathic doctors are much lower than our MD colleagues because of our natural safety record. In the interest of public safety, the SB 538 must pass. In many cases, an ND is the only doctor being seen. Um, many of our doctors can't get this supervision agreement, as we talked about, so they have to refer out for necessary prescriptions, such as antibiotics, blood pressure medications, and asthma inhalers. This often means a costly referral to urgent care or the emergency room, especially in the more rural parts of our state. Many of these circumstances do require quick treatment in order to avoid long-term complications and short-term emergencies that can occur with things such as strep throat or high blood pressure. The restriction of practice on trained naturopathic doctors to prescribe these necessary primary care medications is a danger to Californians. In summary, naturopathic doctors are well trained to safely prescribe medications beyond what SB 538 will allow. Passage of this bill will improve access to care and prevent harm to our fellow Californians. I urge you to vote in favor of SB 538. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And we're going to pause before uh, Dr. Miller speaks uh, to take our roll because we do have a quorum. Bonilla? Here. Jones? Here. Baker? Here. Bloom? Here. Campos? Here. Chang? Here. Dodd? Here. Eggman? Here. Gotto? Here. Holden? Mullen? Ting? Wilk? Wood? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you, uh, Dr. Miller. Thank you, and thank you for the opportunity to speak before you this morning. My name is Marcus Miller, and my perspective on this bill is informed by the fact that I'm a dual-degreed physician, having been trained both as an MD and as a ND. I obtained my MD from the Louisiana State University School of Medicine in 1982. Thereafter, I completed a one-year internship and family practice, followed by a three-year residency in internal medicine. I am board certified and have been in clinical practice now for 29 years. During my clinical practice as an internist and as an urgent care physician, it became increasingly clear to me that I had notable limitations in the tools offered to my patients in terms of chronic diseases, in particular hypertension, diabetes, and asthma. I have had the opportunity to co-manage several of those patients with naturopaths in my community, naturopathic doctors in my community, and uh, to a person, each of those patients had outcomes that were better than I imagined they would be. Uh, my curiosity was piqued and indeed I returned to school in order to further my skill set in offering my patients the best medicine I can and received my naturopathic doctorate in 2001. 
In addition to my clinical practice, I am an associate professor of medicine at the Naturopathic College in Portland, Oregon. Among the courses I teach are Pharmacology 1 and 2. These two courses represent 60 hours of class time devoted entirely to pharmacology. This is my 12th year of teaching, and I can tell you that my students do not get out of my classes unless they know how to safely write and manage prescription medications. In addition to my classes, students are going to be learning more pharmacology in the basic and clinical sciences, including cardiology, gastroenterology, gynecology, and endocrinology, for example. In addition to the class time, naturopathic doctoral students have a minimum of 1,200 hours in rotation in primary care clinic settings. Naturopathic medical doctors put into practice the safe and effective use of the medications that are, pro that are commonly used in primary care. As a medical doctor, I can assure you that naturopathic doctors are clinically trained and competent to prescribe all primary care medications well beyond the scope of this current bill. I want to thank you again for affording me the privilege of speaking before you today, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have pertinent to naturopathic medical training. And in closing, I respectfully request that you vote yes on Senate Bill 538. Thank you. Uh, and uh, in support, briefly. Yes. Good morning. I'm Rebecca Mitchell. I'm the executive officer of the Naturopathic Medicine Committee. And can you pull the microphone closer and uh, so everyone can hear? Thank you. There you go. Good morning. I'm Rebecca Mitchell. I'm the Executive Officer of the Naturopathic Medicine Committee under the Department of Consumer Affairs. And the committee is in full support of SB 538. Naturopathic doctors are well trained to provide comprehensive primary care services as they do in our neighboring states and throughout the nation. SB 538 will also have the potential to attract and keep I'm sorry, and keep more naturopathic doctors in the state by removing unfavorable scope limitations in California, thereby helping the state increase its number of primary care providers. We are well prepared to carry out the laws created by SB 538 in regards to increased licensure and enforcement. The committee is currently on the DCA's new Breeze system, which has streamlined our licensing and enforcement processes. We are also part of the development implementation and funding of the Department of Justice new two, Cures 2.0 program, which will further assist our committee in enforcement actions relating to prescribing. Additionally, we work with the same investigators as the MD and DO boards and have a good enforcement program set in place. I would like to highlight that the NMC has one of the smallest enforcement caseloads within the department and has been able to work our caseloads within our budgetary means consistently and usually with a reversion of our annual budget. Since the passage of the original licensing bill in California in 2003, the committee continues to have excellent safety ratings with no harm to patients. 91% of our enforcement cases are solely related to the misuse of title by individuals who are not naturopathic doctors. The safety record of full scope naturopathic medicine is also reflected in the fact that nationwide naturopathic doctors have one of the lowest malpractice rates of any primary care provider type. The committee has adopted disciplinary guidelines and strategic plans as recommended by the Sunset Review. The committee is prepared for the changes in law that would result in SB 538 and urges your vote of support of this bill as well. We appreciate your time and consideration in this matter. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, others in support, please just your name and organization. Um, we're, are we going to have a microphone? Because okay. everyone okay. sitting down is going to take way too long. Just your name and organization. Thank you. Jory Gonzalez with AARP and its 3 million members in Thank support. You. Thank you very much. Next. <laughs> name and organization. Thank you. Hi. My name is Dr. Daniel Brousseau. I am an osteopathic physician and board certified family practice doctor. I'm in practice in Pasadena, California, where I provide primary medical care to children and adults along with four other doctors, all of whom are licensed naturopathic doctors. And you're in support, right? I would like to speak today about my naturopathic colleagues' competence and professionalism. I have now had 12 years' experience consulting and collaborating with naturopathic doctors to diagnose and treat a very broad range of people and medical conditions. And I want to tell you today... Sir, sir? Yes. Name and affiliation, and I would you voting on the bill. That is it. Okay. Thank you. I, I vote in support. I, I urge you to vote in support of SB 538. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. You. All right, next speaker. Hi, 
Is this working? Yeah. Hi, my name is Miles Spar. I'm a medical doctor, board certified in internal medicine, and a member of the Medical Board of California since 1998. I'm a member of the Naturopathic Medicine Committee and a clinical faculty member of UCLA School of Medicine. I just want to go on record in support of this bill. I have no reservation about natu naturopathic doctors' ability to prescribe safely these medications and the ability for the Naturopathic okay. Medicine Committee to enforce this legislation. Thank you so much. All right. From now on, name, uh, organization, and support. Thank you. Uh, I'm Don Krushwitz. I'm an MD and a naturopathic uh, doctor f from the National College in uh, Portland, Oregon. And uh, I teach uh, clinic students in the clinic, and uh, they're very capable of using these medications in the clinic, and I support this bill. Thank you. And I do have an eye reco on the bill, so you don't need to talk me into it. Name, organization, and support. <laughs> but you do need to talk some of the members into it. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Elizabeth Mayer, I'm a board certified family practice physician. I work at One Medical Group in San Francisco and I support this bill. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> Hello, I'm Dr. Sitara Tice. I'm president of the CNDA and I support this bill. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Dr. Simon Barker, naturopathic doctor. Uh, I ask for your I vote on SB 538. Thank you. Thanks. Hello, I'm Dr. Dennis Godby, naturopathic doctor here in Midtown Sacramento, and ask for your support of SB 538. Thank you. Hello, my name is Bruce Hancock. I'm CEO of Aegis Insurance Associates. We have a nationwide program uh, for the malpractice programs for naturopathic doctors, and we are in full support of this bill. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Jenny Mann, a naturopathic doctor in San Francisco, asking for your support of this bill. Thank you. I'm Dr. Durga Reddy. I'm a naturopathic doctor in Orange County, and I ask for your support of this bill. Thank you. Thank you. I'm the anchor, Dr. David Field, chair of the Naturopathic Medical Committee, constituent of Jim Woods. I urge you to vote yes for this bill. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, any testimony in opposition? Welcome. <coughs> Please introduce yourself, yes. Good morning, my name is Dr. Ron, Ronald Lapugan. Uh, I'm representing the California Academy of Family Physicians. I live in Brisbane, California, and I practice at San Francisco General Hospital and Trauma Center. I'm a clinical professor of family and community medicine at the University of California, San Francisco. And um, the California Academy of Family Physicians stands opposed to this bill unless amended. Um, uh, I'm sorry, we stand opposed to this bill. <laughs> we uh, already amended it. <laughs> I, we really stuff. amended it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we practice medicine based on measurable causative factors with treatments uh, pr uh, proven by scientific methods, as opposed to naturopathic medicine, which is based on more simple theories that many times contradict our science-based knowledge and only assume the safety of the treatments that they prescribe. There are uh, several reasons why we oppose this bill. Uh, first, it has to do with patient safety and, um, and the prescription of Schedule V and Legend drugs. There is not only a lot of benefit that can come from the prescription of these drugs, but there is much harm. And is n it is not just about knowing what the risks of of the drugs are and the interactions that they have with, with other medications, but it's also how to deal with the side effects and unintended consequences of providing medications, prescribing medications, and dealing with the outcomes when prescribing a medication causes a problem. And it's also being able to recognize when that happens. Uh, family physician, as a family physician, um, I've received training in medical school and residency and in practice. Um, in in counting medical school and residency, I've received uh, 15,000 hours of training. And most of what I know about medications is not just from the 
classes that I took in medical school, but it was from that clinical training where I actually was able to see drugs prescribed and see the effects of the drugs and see the, how doctors dealt with the side effects and unintended consequences. Um, there are many pitfalls in, in prescribing medications that our naturopathic doctors wish to, wish to prescribe in independent practice. For example, blood pressure medications and chronic kidney disease. If you pick the wrong one, you can cause a life-threatening elevation in potassium levels. Prescribing diuretics um, can cause low potassium levels, also can be life-threatening, or they can cause uh, 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 acute kidney injury. Avoiding interactions with antibiotics and antifungal medications and the rest of the medications that a patient may be taking in order to prevent uh, unintended consequences like liver failure or being able to recognize when a patient on steroids is uh, in an adrenal crisis. The pitfalls are many and the training of, um, of primary care physicians like myself uh, uh, we, we learn and abide by evidence-based standards of care um, which uh, have been uh, proven over time and uh, oftentimes run counter to or in opposition to uh, uh, the standards or lack thereof that our naturopathic doctors practice under. The other uh, issue here is that um, this is not an access issue. If you take a look at the numbers of naturopathic doctors that practice in California and compare those to the numbers of primary care uh, physicians. And if you look at the geographic distribution of the naturopathic doctors, uh, they practice in basically the same geographic distribution as primary care <coughs> physicians. Okay. And in such small numbers to provide uh, uh, the uh, ability for these doctors to uh, sure. prescribe Schedule five and legend drugs um, would n not uh, um, result in an immeasurable improvement in okay. uh, the access to primary care. Got to wrap it up. Uh, hope you have a short statement. Thank you. Yes, of course. Hi, Angelica Gonzalez with Kaiser Permanente. We are unfortunately opposed to the bill. Uh, when the bill, when we got the amendments, I took the took them back to our physician leadership in the north and the south, and unfortunately. They just don't believe that naturopathic practitioners have the training or education to be allowed to prescribe some of these drugs, um, especially in a time when we're all very worried about antibiotic resistance, the, the expanded scope to allow them to prescribe some of these drugs, as well as some drugs that have the potential for abuse and harm, such as codeine and pseudofedrin. Uh, we just don't think that it's warranted at this time. So for those reasons, we are opposed to the bill. Uh. Others in opposition? Thank you. Senator <laughs> Smose with the Medical Board of California. We're also opposed for the reasons already stated. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, Matt Back, representing the Osteopathic Physicians and Surgeons of California, also in opposition. <laughs> Madam Chair, members, Bryce Dougherty on behalf of the California Society of Anesthesiologists, also in opposition. Stand up, Mike, sir. Oh, I'm not yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair and members, Tim Shannon representing the California Orthopedic Association, also in opposition. <clears throat> Madam Chair and members, Tim Madden representing the California Society of Plastic Surgeons in the California chapter of the American College of Cardiology in opposition. Madam Chair and members, Randall Hager for the California Psychiatric Association. We are in opposition um, for the reasons stated. Thank you very much. Madam Chair, Paula Treat, on behalf of the Ca California Academy of Eye Physicians and Surgeons, CAPS, which are also the ophthalmologists, opposed. Thanks. All right, we'll bring it back to the committee. <clears throat> I will just say that we did uh, significantly reduce uh, the scope of the bill uh, through the amendments. I want to thank the author for taking those amendments. Uh, just a quick comment. Um, I think naturopathic doctors are probably the last ones that will overuse antibiotics, uh, and I don't think they're going to be abusing pseudo Pseudofed either. So, uh, comments from uh, the committee or questions? You're looking like you might have one. Well, I, I wanted to clarify, <laughs> um, ma'am, I don't remember your name, but you talked about uh, prescription of sort of things. Can you repeat what you said? Because Sudafed is an over-the-counter, so we typically don't prescribe those kinds of things. So Right. That, that's true. However, I think the bigger issue for us is just the antibiotics. And while we, we do accept that they might be weaning them off of antibiotics, I think it depends on or off. We want to be able to know what is happening with our members and if they are going outside of the Kaiser system um, to a naturopath that's completely within their rights. But we're just you know, afraid that we won't, be, we won't know we won't have the complete medical record for them. Well, I guess my, my part of my 
concern here is I hear, nat I hear naturopath and I hear naturopathic doctors, and we're not making a distinction there. These are, this bill is specific to naturopathic doctors. It's not specific to naturopaths. And quite frankly, for me, that has been a hurdle to get over to because I had I'd really never heard of either, quite frankly. Um, and and so, so I just want to be sure that when you're making your comments that they are specific to naturopathic doctors and not naturopaths in general because that's not what I heard from the table there. So, <laughs> I, that, and, and maybe that's my interpretation, but I think there's, I think there's some, a little bit of mixed messaging there. So, um, so I just, just my concern. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, seeing no other comments. Yes, Ms. Baker. Thank you. Um, I did want to get a point of clarification because I, I have read all the materials. I appreciate that you took the amendments. Still need a little clarification. It, with all the amendments, is there any continued supervision by an MD at all? Absolutely. We retain okay. the supervision for Schedule 3 and Schedule 4 if we desire to, to prescribe those medications, just as it is currently in our law. Okay, so it's Schedule 5 that is... Schedule 5 and Legend Drugs would, would not require supervision from an MD. Mm -hmm. And maybe for clarification, you could say what those drugs were. Some members joined us late. Right. So some of the examples of these medications that are in Schedule 5, which is the only one that's controlled, um, is Lamotil or cough syrup with codeine. So basic primary care um, type of medications. Legend drugs are things like antihypertensives, diabetic medication, and antibiotics. Okay. And we're just referring to the prescription, but the, my understanding this bill does cover things beyond prescriptions unless we've narrowed it uh, no, even we more. Narrowed it. We, we did. took the amendment. Oh, narrowed, this is all we're talking about right now. Okay, good. Thank you for that clarification. All right. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Jones. I'm Thank not. you. Senator Block, thanks uh, for working with the committee and uh, working on the amendments. I appreciate that. Um, as you may know, my wife's family leans very heavily towards a naturopathic uh, choice for medical care. And so I'll be supporting the bill today and um, look forward to working with you in the future on other issues with it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Ms. Segman. Uh, just up for another point of clarification. So. Under under the current the, the current system, naturopathic physicians can also or doctors can also uh, do supervision with a with whom they're currently under supervision with. Correct. Meaning that once this bill passes, that we would retain the same supervision that we currently have for Schedule Three and Four. Correct. Yes. Correct. And so, if there was any issues that would come up that some of the, the physician was raising that you wouldn't know what was going on. If there were questions and or if there were symptoms that came up, you could still consult with the physician, correct? Right. right. As it currently stands, we have to have, to have supervision for all medications that are not synthetic or natural hormones, and we do have to have that physician available to consult with should we have any questions that arise. Schedule 3 does require a patient-specific prescription as well. Okay. Thank you. Just a, a little extra clarification from Ms. Hicks. Thank you. Jody Hicks with the California Academy of Family Physicians. I do want to clarify on, on that question, though. There is no requirement for supervision um, if they're not prescribing Schedule 3 and 4. So there would be independent naturopaths that would be prescribing Schedule 5 without supervision. And one of our main concerns is some of these things that are for chronic conditions like high blood pressures and statins. There's also no requirement to consult with the physician that currently prescribed that before changing that prescription. So we heard that a lot in the conversation that they wanted to, the ability to wean folks off of drugs or change prescriptions, and the bill doesn't require any consultation with the prescribing physician. So, so just, just clarification there, there could be situations where there's no supervision at all. Madam Chair, could our MD clarify the clarification? Yes. Yeah, thank, you, thank you so much. <laughs> and I'm going to clarify and take Well, I vote. would like to say that getting back to the prescribing doctor is a common courtesy among all doctors. NDs, MDs, our naturopathic doctoral students are taught whenever possible to contact the prescribing doc. But as an MD, I very often was in circumstances where I would not necessarily contact that physician because someone's blood pressure was too low, too high. I needed to adjust that medication, even if they were being seen by another MD, specialist, generalist. And I'd also, if I may, just add, what I teach is based on science. And evidence-based medicine. In fact, the school where I teach just got a $3.1 million grant from the NIH for evidence-based medicine research. Thank you. Okay, I think we'll go ahead. Oh, Mr. Bloom. I, um, that prompts me to ask a question. If it's, if it's common courtesy um, already, why not just include it as a requirement in the bill? And maybe both sides can uh, respond to that. 
So the reason that it, we wouldn't include it as common courtesy in the bill is because in some of these circumstances, in fact, many of these circumstances, because we are primary care doctors, um, the patients have transitioned their care exclusively to us. And so referring back to a non-treating doctor to make an adjustment in a medication that's necessary for their care, and this is an adjustment. It's not weaning off. It is an adjustment that's necessary based on your health circumstances. Um, that would be an unnecessary, again, barrier to providing timely care in a necessary circumstance. Yeah, yes. Before some of the members came in in my initial presentation, which was brilliant. Um, <laughs> as, as always. <laughs> uh, I, I did mention what, what is really one of the cruxes of this issue is that there is right now sometimes weeks or months of a delay in referral from one doctor to another, whether it's an MD or an ND. And that, in the case of some of these medications, um, can change a, a, what is a, a, a serious medical condition to a, a much more serious condition. Um, if, if someone presents um, and needs a rescue inhaler, if someone needs blood pressure medicine, and the naturopathic doctor who does, again, have all of the training that's been mentioned, um, has to refer to an MD, um, that can take weeks or months to get that referral, and the patient could be dead by then. Um, and maybe you just want to summarize the training, because I, I think there are only two of us here when you yeah. mention that. Um, yeah, the, the naturopathic doctors attend four years. Again, I think Dr. Wood is absolutely right. Some people confuse naturopath with the naturopathic doctors. Two very different things. Um, and I, I wouldn't be here to support naturopaths having any scope of practice. Naturopathic doctors, on the other hand, attend four-year postgraduate accredited medical, naturopathic medical schools. Um, they have a curriculum in bioscience, um, pharmacology, lab diagnosis, et cetera, that's more hours than required at Yale Medical School and only slightly less than required at Johns Hopkins Medical School. While they don't do a hospital residency because they don't practice in hospitals, they are required to do 1,200 hours of clinical experience. Um, they're, they're supervised by a board here in California that includes two MDs, one a Harvard-trained MD. Um, there was a committee that met Looking at the Affordable Care Act coming in, and, and by the way, the, the CMA was the first to say that we couldn't possibly serve all the people who would be covered with insurance by the Affordable Care Act with the number of primary care physicians we have, and CMA was absolutely right about that. Um, we can't, so this expands people's coverage of primary care doctors to naturopathic doctors. Um, the, the, there was a committee made up of equal numbers of MDs and naturopathic doctors that met last year, I guess a year and a half ago, to decide what the scope should be um, in, so we could start to actually care for patients who have coverage. And that, that group, equal numbers, naturopathic doctors and MDs, um, had far broader scope that they thought we should grant to naturopathic doctors than this bill grants, even than the original bill granted. And the way the bill now has been amended, and thanks to the chair and committee, um, this is just a tiny sliver of the scope that this MD, ND committee thought that we should give to naturopathic doctors. Thank you. Um, Ms. Hicks. Um, just a, a couple of points on that. I, I want to be clear that for naturopathic doctors, we believe that there's an a important place for them in the healthcare system. We think it's complementary medicine. We think they do do some primary care work, but we also think for prescriptive authority, it should be in an integrated setting. And, and insofar as access, I do have to um, point out a couple of things. One is naturopathic doctors still, um, whether that's changing or not, but today is currently not recognized by Medicare nor Medi-Cal. And most insurance companies, because of that, are, are, don't accept um, naturopathic doctors. So, so we are talking about a population of patients. If we're, if we're saying it's weeks or months to get a referral, we're talking about a population of patients that oftentimes pay cash. So that's not always true. Um, that doesn't mean that they shouldn't be able to see their naturopathic doctors. We, we want them to. But there's a difference in what I talked about before in a referral and changing a prescription. And what was stated there is the reason to not contact the physician is because they've transferred their health care over to a naturopathic doctor. Well, if you're on 
have currently a prescription for some chronic condition, it's probably not a good idea to completely transfer your care to a naturopathic doctor who doesn't have full prescriptive authority. You probably need to have both, and that's what we think is best if you have a physician that you're okay. being treated for those. It's not retestify. Okay. Could, okay. Uh, yes. May, if I might just uh, uh, wrap up so, uh, my, uh, my question. I, I, I guess just based on what I'm hearing, I'm not convinced that uh, um, uh, the – it, it, it seems to me that there should be um, a requirement for more communication um, and that patients are best served by that. And so at, at this time, uh, I, I won't be supporting the bill. Okay, thank you. All right, I think we'll uh, have a motion and a second. Mr. Jones, like, looks like you're going to have to move it. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Thanks. Okay, let's vote. And it's due pass as amended to appropriations. Bonilla? Aye. Bonilla, aye. Jones? Aye. Jones, aye. Baker? No. Baker, no. Bloom? <coughs> Campos? Chang? No. Chang, no. Dodd? Aye. Dodd, aye. Eggman? Aye. Eggman, aye. Gatto? No. Gatto, no. Holden? Mullen? Ting? Aye. Ting, aye. Wilk? No. Wilk, no. Wood? Aye. Wood, aye. Six to four, the measure's on call. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you.